hours. Haven't always had time to answer all of the questions that come in. So today I hope we do get to answer a few questions that you have. But first, we'll lead away with a bit of a focus. Now it says grammar and vocabulary, and today we're going to look at prepositions. There comes the sound. Let me get rid of that. All right. That wasn't meant to come live there. Okay. Find out where that one's coming from. Okay. All right. Here we go, everyone. Let's get started, everyone. And just one quick question. Can you hear and see me clearly? Just type in yes or give me a thumbs up if that's all clear for you. All right. Hello to India. Uh, hello, wherever you are listening. Hello to Kuwait. Sherry says yes. Thank you, Sherry. Okay. So don't forget, like us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube um, so you can keep up to date with everything we're doing. And don't forget, um, visit us at OET online oetonline.net.au to see the great range of courses that we do offer. Uh, we also have a free trial course, everyone. So if you do visit that site, take advantage of that and find out more about our study programs. Okay, let's begin. So prepositions, everyone, let me ask you all a question. On a scale of one to 10, one is easy, 10 is hard. How do you find prepositions um, overall? So while you're thinking about that, one is easy, 10 is hard. How would you rate using prepositions in writing? Is it the same as prepositions in your language? Are prepos prepositions in English the same as in your language? Are they different? Are there any particular difficulties that you have? Um, type in any thoughts that you have. Sonia has given it a six. It's a good rating there. Thank you, Sonia. Mary's about the same, five or six. A seven from Tyler. Yeah, look, I think that's good numbers coming in. I don't think prepositions are the hardest things in the world. Perhaps not as hard as articles or verb use or other things, you know, but they are important. They are important. You know, so uh, the purpose of this session to be the beginning bit, is just to have a look at a few of the problems that can occur because they are very important. Why are they important? Well, um, prepositions give us direction and order within a sentence. Order of events can be expressed. Um, they're good to indicate time or place, location. Prepositions are very good with that. Um, they can be used in phrases to um, introduce a topic, um, a phrasal verb. They're often used there. Um, so, but what you can do, you can just improve your accuracy through observation. That's my advice for everyone. Observation. Look at how it's used. Um, have that awareness um, to get a good exam score, you need to be linguistically aware, aware of your own writing. That's the trick. And then, of course, memorization. A lot of language learning is memorization. And with prepositions, with phrasal verbs and, and the like, you need to be able to memorize which prepositions go with which verbs or with which adjectives or with which noun. So it's all part of it. It's all about memory. Um, okay, so let's get started, everyone. And we'll just do um, we'll just do a bit of a beginning here of in, on, at. Uh, in, on, at, very, very common prepositions. Um, and generally speaking, people can manage these, but they're are a few elements of confusion that I hope I can address. Right, hello to the Maldives, good to see you. Hello to Afghanistan. Um, 
Okay. Salu says OET should be flexible for nurse and doctor in marking in this pandemic to give reward for their services. Well, look, yeah, it's tough in the pandemic time, everyone. Um, so hopefully you can get those results you are looking for. Okay, so let's have a look at this, everyone. I'll just go through these. Time, everyone. So time, and I've got in, in is general, everyone. So in is really broad when we use in. It's bigger. It talks about bigger areas. So in terms of time, in two weeks, um, that is a broad time frame, a two-week time frame. In January, there are 31 days in January, although four days left as I type. Again, it's broad. Childhood, in childhood, um, people pick up have or may have medical situations, um, part of their medical history in their childhood. Childhood, childhood goes for a long time. So in is for general things with time. And when you think about location and treatment, the same thing applies. In hospital, it's quite a broader general area. In the emergency department, we can even talk about location on the back, pain in the lower back. It's in the region. It's not as precise yet. So in for general. When we move to on, we're getting a little bit more specific, everyone, a little bit more specific. So on admission. Now, that will generally be on admission day. Pay people are patients are admitted on day, so on a Monday, on a Wednesday, on the 27th of January 21. So these all refer to day, so they're more specific. On examination, examination is at a time on a day again. So, oops. <clears throat> so we can see we're getting more specific. We also use this term for um, treatment on a particular medication, the patient is on a medication, or they could be on a particular program, a, um, a CBT program or a weight loss program, many different programs, a smoking cessation program. So you can be on a program. And you might have a rash for location. You might have a rash on the stomach, right? On the surface there, on the stomach. So on, we're getting more specific. Lastly, we've got at. This is technically the most specific, at. So um, we've gone from January to the 27th of January, and now we've gone to 2 p.m. So it's getting more specific, at 2 p.m., at discharge, at birth, at death, right? So we can use all of these terms to be precise. Now, an interesting thing, everyone, is, and this is one of the confusing things that you'll sometimes see, you might see something written, you might see um, on discharge. Has anyone ever seen on discharge? On discharge? because I've just got at discharge, but we've also got on discharge. So what's going on there? Why have we got ones at, ones on? I could also write um, at admission. So what that's all about is, it just depends how specific the writer is being. So when we see that variation, everyone, they're actually both correct, right? All of these are correct. So there's more than one option. It depends how specific you're trying to be as the writer. So there is flexibility, everyone. Language is not just one rule. There's different influences and it depends on the point of view of the writer. Okay. All right, hope that's clear, everyone. Hope that's clear, everyone. All righty. 
Now, I think all is going well. Let's continue on. Uh, for location and treatment, we also say at home, at the specific location of home, at work. These are specific places. And we also use at for a percentage, everyone, a percentage of something, a rate of something. Okay, so the patient's oxygen levels were at 98%. So you're also going to be using at for those types of phrases. Okay. Now let's move to the next slide and we'll look at a few more examples before we practice. Now a few other common prepositions in medical writing. Uh, with is very common, of, for, by, and over. Let's have a quick look at what these mean as well. So with is possessing or belonging or connected, right? So we, with is a very common one. Um, and here's an example. John presented with a three-week history of back pain. So he had back pain. It's like saying John has had back pain for three weeks, but we can use the preposition before the noun, John presented with a three-week history of back pain, with very common in medical writing. Of, that's something that's possessed again, or it's identifying a relationship between two nouns. One noun is a part of the other noun, very important for formal writing. X-ray revealed a diagnosis of sciatica, right? So a diagnosis of sciatica. Okay, the, um, the diagnosis or the sciatica, there's a relationship between diagnosis and, and sciatica. They are connected, okay? The diagnosis is sciatica. Sciati sciatica belongs to that diagnosis. So that's of. Then we've got for. For is, indicates reason. I'm referring Mr. K for, that's our reason, for urgent investigation of upper GI symptoms. So investigation of the symptoms. The symptom, symptoms are part of the investigation. So it's belonging. So two examples there. Then we've got by. Now, by identifies the actor or agent in a sentence or how something was done. So the operation was performed by an orthopedic surgeon. So that's identifying the actor, the person who did it. And last one, we've got over. Over is good for time. Um, Mr. Nows has lost 2 kg over the last four weeks. So over, over means above, over a period of time. It doesn't mean constantly, but it means over that period. Okay, so we've gone through in, on, at, and we've looked at with, of, for, by, and over. I'd say these are the most common prepositions you're going to see in medical writing. That's one thing knowing them. The next thing is how do you use them? So I've got some sentences, everyone. This is where we're going to have a little bit of fun. I want you to tell me uh, which prepositions fit in which gap. Because, you know, if you had to count how many prepositions there were in a medical referral letter, I can tell you there are a lot, everyone. There are a lot and there can be more than one option, everyone. Lots of comments coming through. Wonderful to see. Hello, while I'm waiting. Hello in the Philippines and Islamabad in Pakistan. Um, hello in Kerala. Okay, so let's read the first one, everyone. Answers are coming in. I'm going to read the sentence and then you tell me the gaps. So we're going to use these ones at the top, in, on, at, of, to, over, for, with, or by. So Mrs. X presented something, the clinic, with 
a three-week history, something pain, something left hip. Okay. Now we've got two. A lot of people are going two for the first one. Okay. Um, you could use two because two gives us direction. But I've used at. Why have I used at? You could say presented to. That's works direction. But remember what we said before about location. Clinic is a specific place. So you'll often see this. She presented at the clinic with a three-week history. Now, a lot of people know you have of. Everyone's saying of with a three-week history of pain. Okay, now some saying at the left hip. Well, at sometimes we do use at a riff and others, but... Um, and some people are saying pain on the left hip. I'm getting some ons here. Um, but there's a bit of a problem with on because pain is usually internal, everyone. Pain is internal. So there it is. Now, just remember, you might have a bruise on your hip. You can have a bruise on your hip. But pain is generally internal. So we're going to use in okay all right so that's the first one so i noticed many people use to presented to the clinic and look i would definitely tell you you can use presented to but when you're looking through different um examples when you're reading different referral letters which i strongly advise you to do just remember when you see at now you know why. It's location, specific location. So there are more options. Okay, number two, everyone. Second one here. I would be grateful if you could see Mr. K. Now, this is a hard one. Earliest convenience. Hmm. Was someone saying at? What are we going to say? In your earliest convenience? on your earliest convenience, at? I think it's going to be one of these, in, on, or at, isn't it, everyone? In, on, or at. A few people are going on, all right? It's a tricky one. It is at, everyone. Well done if you said at. Now, why would we say at your earliest convenience? We often use at for time. So we're really referring to time here. We're being specific, you know, whether maybe your earliest convenience is 4 p.m. at 4 p.m. It really means at a time. So we're really referring to time here, 24 hours a day. So that's why we use at. Good one to remember. Okay, that's at everyone. Um, next one. Mrs. S. became now look, we've got a lot we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven prepositions in these couple of sentences. So very easy to um, mix a few of these up. Um, hello to some welcome back to Zoe and people who haven't been here for a long time. Mrs. S became unwell on. Now we know on, that's not too hard, is it? It's one of those easy ones on for dates. It's relatively specific. It's more specific than the month of August. I always like to think of this one. Uh, one way you can remember these ones is it's on. It's on. It's on one day. There are many dates in August. It's on one of them. Whereas if we just said August in August, it's amazing how many people make that mistake. But imagine on exam day, if you said this, everyone, Mrs. S became unwell. And if you wrote in 23 August, well, your reader is confused, very confused. It's going to be a problem. And if you put, if Mrs. S became well on August, again, it's a big problem. So you really got to be careful here 
because prepositions give us direction. If you give the wrong direction, your reader gets lost. Okay, so we've got to get this stuff right. Now, people know the next one. Mrs. S became unwell on 23rd of August while visiting her sister. And I can see lots of ins coming through in Brisbane. Why in Brisbane? Well, it's general. It's a big area in Australia, in Queensland, in Brisbane, where I'm from. Um, it's a location of a place. It's general. She was admitted. Now, what are we going to put here? Was she admitted in Spirit Hospital? Was she admitted to Spirit Hospital? She, we could say admitted at. Yes, she was admitted at is possible because um, it's a particular hospital. So we've got choices, but what goes best with the verb admitted. A lot of people are saying admitted to, at or to. Some people are saying at Brisbane, not at Brisbane, in Brisbane. So here we are saying she was admitted to Spirit Hospital. But I would definitely accept admitted um, at. That's fine. But what I wouldn't really accept is in. In is very non-standard. So at is okay, but a lot of people write admitted in. Um, but in this case, we don't want to say admitted in. It's because of the verb admit. You either admit to or you admit at because it's something specific. Okay, she might live in Brisbane, but admit to somewhere specific. Okay. She was admitted to Spirit Hospital. A lot of people have already got the next one with fever. That's right. That's um, what belongs to her, unfortunately, with fever, pleuritic chest pain, tachycardia, and general malaise. She will be, look at those lovely medical. That's a lovely sentence, everyone. Really good summary skills. She will be discharged home. Now, what are we going to say? We've got something specific, a specific time, everyone. She will be discharged home in 4 p.m., at 4 p.m., on 4 p.m. That's an easy one, isn't it? At 4 p.m. She will be discharged home at 4 p.m. And now we just got the same patterns here. Yeah, people getting at for that one. And then on, on for months, easy one. Make sure you get it right. And then it goes on to say, a nurse will provide home visits. Now, this is a tricky one. We've got a couple of options. The next three weeks. Something the next three weeks. I've got an over the next three weeks. I think over works. And we've got a four. Yes. Now, let's talk about the difference between over and four, everyone. So I would accept four as well for a period of time. Okay. And they basically have the same meaning and they can be interchanged here. Okay. It just means over a period of time. Over is quite good, though. Um, because it just means that um, it could be daily, it could be every two days, it could be every three days, we don't know. But over a period of time, there will be visits. Okay, but you could use four for the next three weeks, meaning for that period of time. So they both work, everyone. Um, more than one option. Okay, number four, everyone. Number four. In terms something mobility. He is able to manage his personal hygiene and can walk independently, something a slow pace. Of is coming through, yes, because um, terms relates to which terms? The terms of mobility. There's a connection in terms of mobility. 
And in terms also an expression, in terms of mobility, he is able to manage his personal hygiene and can walk independently. Mm, we've got with a slow pace. Mm, so we're talking about the pace. Pace is like a rate, everyone. It's a bit of a hard one. Four, we're getting with, mm, with an at, with an at. Yeah, they are the two main ones. You know, with a slow pace, you know, with has a, a type of meaning um, describing how he walks. Maybe that pace is belonging to him. He walks with a slow pace. So that's not too bad, but I prefer at. With is pretty close. If you wrote with, I think it would be accepted. But pace is, yes, like Yukiko says, it's a rate. So things which are rates or speeds, we normally use at, at 25 kilometers an hour, at 30 kilometers an hour. So it's a pace, a pace speed, a measurement. At is more common in this case. At a slow pace, we're describing his rate, his movement, his speed. So at is the best one. With a slow pace is more describing not so much the pace, but how he walks. So a slight difference in meaning. Next one. She was complaining of people are doing well here. Um, moderate, yes. Moderate pain. Six out of ten is moderate. She was complaining of moderate pain. To complain of. That's a common expression. Patients always complain of some uh, issue in their health. She was complaining of moderate pain. Now, this is a very hard one. The lateral aspect. This is a trick, everyone. The elbow. Hmm. A lot of people are saying in. Yes. In, we've got two. Yes. Where is it? Well, I'm going to give you a surprise, everyone. It's on, on the lateral aspect. Very hard one. Why on the lateral aspect? Because, and this is where it gets very tricky and we need to look at our nouns. It's because of the word aspect. It's a particular part. The aspect, a location. So it's because of aspect. We, I could write, she had moderate pain. I could say she had moderate pain in her elbow. I would, I would say in the elbow. But because it's an aspect, a part of it, it's on, we're going to use on that aspect. All right, it's a tricky one. So complain of moderate pain on the lateral aspect. People are already putting of, of the elbow. Okay, the aspect belongs to the elbow, the lateral aspect of the elbow with loss, hmm, strength, loss of strength. Yes, that's a common expression, loss of something. The um, strength belongs to the loss. So loss is a noun, strength is a noun. That's our nominalization, two nouns together with of in the middle, with loss of strength the right forearm. Someone put over, hmm, possible, but I'm gonna be, the question I'll ask you is, is uh, look at your noun strength. Is strength internal or external? Where do we get our strength? Is it internal or external? Some are saying on, some are saying over. A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of people are saying in. Definitely in, everyone, with loss of strength in the right forearm because strength comes from internal. So you need to ask yourself, that's right, Sonia. You've got to ask yourself, where does it, where, where is it? Is it on the surface like a rash or a bruise or is it internal? Ask yourself those questions. So she was complaining of loss of moderate pain 
on the lateral aspect of the elbow with loss of strength in the right forearm. Okay, wow, a lot of detail there. Number six, walking something to weekends has been suggested. Um, now we're getting ins and ons coming through. Um, oh, some people saying in the weekend. I wouldn't say in the weekend. We not normally say in the weekend because we want to be more specific. So we're going to say on the weekend, but a lot of people are saying at. Good news, everyone. At is fine. You're just being more specific. Walking at the weekend, but not in everyone, too general. But I'll definitely accept walking at okay so there's options and just because you see a different option when you're reading through model letters doesn't mean you're wrong okay number seven his amylase was also raised now we've got a number 400 units per liter so it was also raised Hmm, which one are we going to put? Number seven, everyone. Someone said, what about over? Mm, it's slightly possible, but a bit too. Not really what we're looking for there, Amma. Some people are saying buy here. Um, was also raised at no, not over here. Not over. Buy, no. We're describing a level, everyone. We're describing a level. You've read the measurement. You've looked at the figures. Yeah, some people are getting it. It's at everyone. Was also raised at 400 units. So that's actually reading off the charts. Oh, 400 UL. It was raised at, and it means at the level of. So we're going to say at because we're describing a level or rate, everyone. It's not an up to, this is not trying to describe an increase or a decrease, it's describing a current level. If I wanted to use increased, his, you know, I could write like this, his amylase, I could do this, everyone, you know, um, you know, I could do something like had increased to 400 units a litre. That's describing an increase, right? So you can write like that. Um, some people did write two. But in this case, we're describing the current level. Okay, next one, number eight. Um, some answers already coming through. Mark is vision impaired. Isn't that great language? Mark is vision impaired, and now the specifics, and is blind. Hmm, blind, internal, external, um, location, at, a bit too general. A lot of people want to say at. I wouldn't say at. I would call this an internal thing, everyone. Mark is vision impaired and is blind, not with, no, it's, it's always a tricky one, this one. He's blind in, you just have to remember this, that's internal, the blindness is internal. It's not on, it's a tricky one. Mark is vision impaired and is blind in his left eye and has 318, that's a, an amount, 318 vision, hmm. Should be the same, shouldn't it? Now what are we going to say? In the right, same thing. In the left eye, and I, and this is we didn't have to put I again because we know. And three eighteen vision in the right. It's obvious that it's I. Okay. Okay. So remember, blind's a tricky one. In. Okay. Next one, number nine. This one's um, treatment. Everyone. Um, I am writing, this is like a um, dietetics task. I'm writing to introduce Mr. Z, who required nasogastric feeding during his stay. Hmm. 
Now, we saw before admitted to hospital, but see, now some people are saying during his stay at this hospital, not too bad during his stay at this hospital, all right, but we're not using with admitted mm, during his stay at, okay, I was going to go, um, see, we could have been more general. I would have accepted in this case, I would have accepted during his stay in this hospital as general. So you've got options in or at both work um, at this hospital. 200 milliliters. A lot of people have done this already. 200 milliliters of Osmolite. Now we've got the word rate. With a rate of, with I would accept, um, I would accept it. I'm going for at, at a rate of 85 mil every hour is delivered fine bore nasogastric tube. So we're talking about the process here now. Process here. Good Tyler, good Kim. A lot of great answers coming through. What about the last one, everyone? Is delivered. We're talking about method is delivered. We're talking about how. Thank you, Amma. Is delivered by fine bore nasogastric tube. Don't you love medical writing? Um, very precise medical writing, very detailed. Via is fine as well, but it's delivered via, delivered by a fine bore nasogastric tube. Okay, all these great things you do um, on your ward, on the job, can be described linguistically. This is medical English, everyone. It's very precise. It needs to be. Number 10, the patient reported, whoops, intermittent numbness. Yeah, I think people saw it in the right foot. And that's because numbness is also an internal sensation. You don't say numbness on, we say numbness in. Okay. Now that is preposition. Now a few people are saying, you know, it's a bit tricky, isn't it, everyone? It's a little bit tricky. So where do we get all these sentences from? Well, look, what all we're doing here, everyone, is analyzing language, looking at lots of samples. Now, the OET Center website has many, many tasks there. They're all free. I encourage you, go to the OET Center website. But don't just look up model letters for your profession. Look up model letters for all professions. Because what you're really learning is medical English. So don't limit yourself to tasks for nurses, tasks for doctors, tasks for pharmacists, whatever your profession is. I strongly recommend to really improve and be able to manage your exam is refer to the model letters, study the patterns of preposition use, and study all the professions and just observe. It'll make a big, uh, it'll have a big impact on your accuracy, everyone. So that's what I'd like you to do. Because um, it is a difficult, it is tricky, as Hamza says, it is tricky. Um, and they're not always governed by strict rules. And there may be more than one option. But the best way for you to learn prepositions is just regular reading and absorbing to get comfortable. And you speed up that process by looking at all these samples out there. Now, if you come to our OET online website to study, we've got hundreds of referral letters, hundreds of examples to review. Um, and also you may have some ingrained errors, some habits that you've developed, 
perhaps your version of English is a little bit non-standard. So there's lots of um, things that you may need to unlearn to get it right. Okay. Now, I've covered the main things I want to cover, everyone. So, look, we've got a new concept, everyone. Q&A, right? We've still got a little bit of time up our sleeve. Uh, we've got another 15 minutes or so. Probably allow for about 10 minutes of questions. So, one thing, we're in 2021, everyone. So, what I want to encourage you to do in 2021 is to submit questions. We all have issues with grammar and things, and we, we want someone to help us and show us the right way. So what I encourage you to do is ask questions, um, particularly grammar-related ones, uh, but can be um, broader than that as well. And I'll do my level best to answer those questions. All right. So in order to do that, I'm going to invite questions. And I can see the first question is a general question. Uh, I'm going to ask Suvi um, Suvitha has a question, everyone. Here's Suvitha's question. Suvitha writes, he has mild infection in the wound. Is it correct? Um, yes, because I would say yes, because um, an infection is internal, everyone. Infections are internal. So I would say yes. There is, a, there is an infection in the wound. Um, or we might say, but, but it's correct, but... Um, you know, I probably, we tend to might say his wound is infected. Might be a bit more standard, right? But, but yes, that's correct. Okay, more questions coming through. Um, can we use in the introduction... I'm not sure what you mean by that, Shreya. It doesn't quite work for me. I can't quite work that question. A um, few coming through now. Wonderful to see. Initiated on or initiated with? Mm, initiated normally on, Lindsay. Um, I'll give a sentence here. Because initiated means started. I'll try to answer all the ones that I can. Um, so I might say, I would normally say initiated on. There may be instances where instances where we could use initiated with, but the treatment was initiated on, and then we might just put a particular date. Means started. Um, if you wanted to use with, I think you'd see it sometimes. It's a bit, you know, was initiated um, with, um, you know, a range of, so it's something, something with a range of um, medication. Possible, possible. But initiated on is more common. Um, got a few more questions coming through. I'm going to, Amma's got a question. I'll, I'll save your question up because it's not a grammar one. Amma wants to know about our intensive reading and listening. I'm going to tell you all about that in one moment, Amma, if you can bear with me. Um, a China says he has a mild, a China says he has a mild, a mild what? Um, Look at this one. Maybe you mean pain. He has a mild pain. Look, my advice there is pain is uncountable. So I would say he has mild pain. 
I know we want to say oh, a type of pain. Is it an intense pain? But generally, pain is uncannable. So I prefer without it. But again, it doesn't have a big impact on meaning. Mary says, can abbreviations be used in writing if they appear in the case notes? Yes, Mary, they can. If your reader would understand their meaning. So look at who you're writing to and decide whether they are comfortable with that meaning. Okay, the million dollar question is coming from Shaquille. How many grammatical mistakes are allowed in the exam? That's a great question, Shaquille. That's a great question. How many grammatical mistakes are allowed in the exam? As little as possible. <laughs> it's a hard one to answer. As little as possible. But look, if your content is good, if your focus is good, of course you can make mistakes, right? But if you make significant errors, some verb tense ones, some of the preposition ones could be significant. If you create an unclear meaning or if you misrepresent the case notes, some understanding, something's lost, then you will be penalized. Basically, the better your control, um, the higher your chance of success. Um, and even a B level is quite a high level. So you don't, you want to really, your job is, um, I wouldn't want to make more than five to five errors if some of the significant because it starts to impact on meaning. But we can't give a precise number because it does depend on how good your content is, how well organized your letter is. And the stronger you are in the other criteria, the, the greater leniency there will be with grammatical errors. But if you're weak in purpose, conciseness and clarity, and you're making mistakes, that can be a problem. Okay. More comments coming through. Um, Malik says, can I put the most important notes at the second paragraph? It's, for letters of all types, I don't think you should. Um, one thing, Malik and everyone, you shouldn't have a one-size-fits-all approach to your letters. You must react on exam day to what you're given and decide what the most logical order of events is for that case. Um, Sienna says, in the purpose of the letter, he is diagnosed with, or he has been diagnosed with. Yeah, that's correct. Um, but I would say I prefer has been, Sienna, has been diagnosed with, because the diagnosis occurred before and is still ongoing. So use present perfect. I have a hypertension, someone writes. No, hypertension is an uncountable noun. So, and for 10 years, that one is, you might have to say, Mr. X has had hypertension for 10 years. That's how you do that one. A um, few more coming through. Um, Jaya says she was initiated with physiotherapy. No, that doesn't really work. You could say physiotherapy was initiated. I'd say she was commenced on mm, commenced on physiotherapy. That will work. Initiated with low dose aspirin mm, treatment. Treatment was initiated with low dose aspirin. There you go. That's one there for you, Um. Tavi says, I have a question. Which is the body of the letter? From where do you start counting? That's an easy one. Introduction. Your introduction, your paragraphs, but not your conclusion. Um, Jaya says, prescribed on or prescribed with? Um, both possible. Prescribed on, that's that specific on a particular medication, but she has been prescribed with, um, 
we can also use with a particular medication. Um, so lots of um, variation there. All right, I'm gonna not get all of these questions done today. In the previous example, Mukta says, we can say home visits will be provided in the next three weeks instead of over. Yes, um, but that has a different meaning. In the next three weeks, hmm, we, means we don't know when. Over is better because it indicates there'll be more than one visit. In, in the next three weeks means at some time during this period, we'll provide a visit. But over means it's going to be continuous. Yep, so the all... So about word length, everyone, that concluding sentence. If you have any queries, do not hesitate to contact me. Technically, is not part of the um, body. All right. Now I'm um, going to run out of time, everyone. So I know lots of questions have come through. Um, Uh, Sienna asked a good question about academic connectors in OET. I wouldn't use them. Not when you when you say academic, like on the other hand, you know, there's a whole bunch of IELTS or PTE type writing connectors for essays, not appropriate for medicine, everyone. So even moreover, furthermore, I would avoid generally speaking, nothing's a hundred percent but we generally want to avoid them. All right. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up, everyone. Now, I'm going to talk about just a few questions. Someone asked how to improve reading skills. Great, Achana. Um, but before I move on, just one question. What do you think of this format, everyone? Um, this is your session. So... In the future, I'm going to do um, a little bit of a grammar review on a particular aspect, and then, then I'm going to invite questions from the audience. Now, what you can do, um, don't do it now, but before the next prep hour. So we're going to do a prep hour every four weeks, everyone. So the next prep hour is going to occur in four weeks' time. So I hope to see you back in four weeks. We're going to be back on February 24, everyone. So in the one week before February 24, I ask you to submit those questions um, that you want answered via Facebook and via YouTube, and we'll do our best to answer those questions. Okay. Now, couple of questions about coming up. So let me um, just take you to a few people ask questions about reading. So that's a good opportunity to do that, everyone. We'll do that now. So look, if you want to improve your reading, well, first question, that I got asked, which course would you recommend? So look, when you come to our website, everyone, this is oetonline.net.au, it has everything you need to improve your reading. Reading takes time. And it kind of depends whether, are you gonna do it solo or, so this is my first question. Do you want to do this by yourself or do you want to get support from a teaching team? Um, Marie says, why don't you do it every week? Um, we run classes every day of the week, Maria, Monday to Friday, two live classes a day. Excellent prices as well. So if you can afford it in your budget, um, it's not expensive, that would be my advice, Maria. Because you're really just investing in your education. Um, and you can do that, everyone, for as little, look everyone, for as little as 99 Australian, about 75 US, that's like a fifth of the price of the exam, you can be in our economy course. It's just $99. And you get unlimited live classes plus recorded video. 
Monday to Friday, twice a day. Honestly speaking, I think that would be a very good investment, don't you? Uh, I know different currencies, just saying no, we've kept that really low um, to give you that access. Okay. Um, now, the question says, how to improve the reading? Yeah, look, reading's a tough one. Absolutely. Um, look, my suggestion, um, we got some great reading courses, everyone. Virtual Reading Class, Platinum, Standard, and so on. Um, my suggestion, if you're looking for a, just a good value budget one, go for Reading Class Standard, $125. You're going to get unlimited live classes for four months twice a day every Tuesday um, and that's where we analyze and it's it comes back to how do you improve in reading you've got to practice you've got to analyze and it takes time um, in our reading courses we have a reading library with um, so many practice tasks um, so so much so I would recommend the standard as great value or the platinum it's cost more but you get two private one hour tutorials with one of our expert teachers so that's a really really good idea there as well so look at one of those options and choose based on your budget and the same applies to listening um, we have the same pattern for listening everyone so look i won't talk any more about that just come and visit the website um, and check all the details out there. Now, don't forget, everyone, last thing to say, um, we've got a Happy New Year sale. Um, you will see us on the OET Centre website as well. And it ends in four days, everyone. So come to the website, check out the sale. We're offering free mock tests on selected courses. So do check it out, everyone. Um, okay. Uh, and don't forget, everyone, I'm going to give you one more link. You want to know how it works, just do our free trial course. You can check out, you can come to a live lecture for free. You can see how it all works and see if it suits your learning style, everyone. How do you do that, everyone? I will give you a link. I'm going to log out here. The way you do that. Here's the login link, everyone. Um, create a new account. This is your link. Don't delay, everyone. Create a new account. I'll put the link there for you. Um, and then get ready to pass OET because um, we have such tremendous success, everyone. Uh, so many um, success stories here, everyone. You can check it out on our testimonial page, um, hundreds and hundreds of success stories. Make sure you're the next one. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll be back. Um, and I look forward to seeing those grammar questions. And I look forward to helping you guys pass OET on your next attempt. Have a good one. Bye for now.